Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us where you're from and tell us what you do. I'm from Iceland and I'm a designer, but uh, I'm very, I, prod I studied product design, but I am passionate about drawing and the imagination. Let's bring up your first image, which is, is one of your drawings. Tell us a little bit about this. I think this, this image sort of, it has a mystery to it. It sort of suggests where you're from. Is it a, something you did with ink? It's a hand-drawn picture? Yeah, this is a, this is a hand drawing. I, um, this is the wanderer, the wanderer. And he kind of appeared uh, out of the fog, as some things do. Uh, he, is a, he is a guide. And, um, and he, has, uh, he is um, a master of the self. He is never lost, because being lost is a part of the journey. And uh, he has, of course, wandered the heaths of Iceland, met many sheep on the way, and, but he has also pointed me in a direction of ancient times, very ancient times. He's pointed me in a direction of the caves where shamanism and magical thinking began. And to the wanderer, every rock, every tree, and every animal is inhabited by an essence that can be communicated with. So, so sorry. Uh, are these stories that, that you've created yourselves or are these characters and legends that are part of Icelandic culture? No, I, I've created them. My culture is based a lot around storytelling in Iceland. And uh, so I think that it's something that we carry within us. But my work, I would say, I would describe it as um, uh, work with the imagination and um, uh, that I use uh, my imagination to, to create um, like story spaces and um, and I am currently developing a book and it is a it's a graphic novel but I've used uh, my drawing in a cross-disciplinary way I work with these drawings in interior design in uh, product design animation and you know so on the rest so. of your images they have a a clear sort of digitalness to them so tell us about this and tell us how you've you moved from traditional drawing skills into computerized animation well, and illustration? I kind of do, the, do both, but I suppose, you know, when I started to use a computer in the 90s, it completely revolutionized my life. And I saw it as a, as a, as a window into maybe the extended mind, you know, and just as a, I don't know, I can't really describe it, but just as a, as a very open space. And then, then this, is a, what's, this is an interior, so you've taken the same sort of fancy language and applied it to a, what? What is this, a bar or something? Yeah, so this, I wanted to show this to show that some of my mad ideas can be <laughs> applied into reality. And uh, this is a bar, and it is, you know, I, I like to, to, you know, to think of a bar, you know, when you enter a bar, you, you leave a part of reality behind, right? And so something like, uh, you know, the imaginary world, I would think works quite well there. So this is a bar in Hong Kong, uh, created a few years ago, and, uh, the architecture in itself was by no means extraordinary. It was like low ceilings, quite difficult space. But by galvanizing the space in this imagery, it felt like you were extending, actually, the architecture, extending your mind into another space. You know? So that was the whole idea. And you've also recently started to, do, to make furniture. So tell us how you take these fantasy forms and apply them to something that... I suppose you have to sit on or put things in or whatever. So tell us about this. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing as with these creatures and characters I'm doing. I see them as, a, as, a, as letters in an alphabet or something. You know, they're like nuances. They are colors, you know. So this is a project I did last year, and it was um, kind of like a mad project because I, I, want, I, I, I wrote this story about this magician uh, who jumps out of a box and starts this magic gardening. and. Uh, and I printed this carpet with a Danish manufacturer and we did a series of, of carpets. And then earlier this year, I, uh, I wanted to expand on the project and create furniture. And they're quite stripped down as steel furniture, created around a very simple process of bending steel. You have a mirror on its knees for you. You have book dogs, little shelves that carry your books, never happier than at your feet. You have the black lady table ready for tea and uh, a read of the raven or something. <laughs> so they're little characters as well, just I like th in I your, think so, yeah. your drawings. And finally, this one. 
So what's happening here? So this is a little teaser. I have, this is work in progress. I haven't shown this to almost anyone. And I am writing a book at the moment. And uh, it is a book about a girl from the old world called Aska. And she goes on a journey into the new world to find a lost dream. And she meets different kinds of characters. And here what we have is, um, yeah, she's meeting the nervous giant. <laughs> and um, they are making a connection. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Well, it's beautiful and it's, it's really poetic. And, and I think what I love about your work is that the starting point of the journey is so utterly different from most other designers' starting point which is about function and materials and stuff like that. And it, to you it, you, it all comes from this world that you've created in your mind, and it's, it's wonderful. And when is your book coming out? Hopefully next year. Uh, I'm working on a few simultaneously. Yeah, and uh, hopefully next and year. And the, the films, are they, do they exist in, in their own right, or is there a plan to sort of make a, a feature film or a movie or something? Well, well, the thing is, you know, I see all of, these, all of these creatures, and I see this nature moving in my mind's eye when I'm drawing them, and I, I wish I... I wish technology was just more advanced, <laughs> then all of this thing would be moving. <laughs> well, give it time, it's catching up fast. Catherine, thanks so much. Thanks Thank so much you. for Thank coming you for along. Having me.